Well, hello, my mathematical geniuses. Um, okay, so today, today's kind of a heavy lesson. Today, we're going to deal with this concept of domain and range. Now, um, it's a heavy lesson for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it's kind of abstract. It's, it's going to take a little bit for you to wrap your head around what's going on. So there, there's kind of two battles with domain and range. Half of it is just understanding what we're talking about. Okay. The second half of it is actually writing it down because it has to be very, very specific. I know you've heard me kind of harp on you guys before about communication and math and how important communication is. Um, when writing domain and range, there are two different ways you're allowed to write it. And if you don't write it, if you don't write one of those ways exactly the way you see me writing it, it will be wrong. It's not going to be a matter of, oh, well, that's what I meant. You have to write it in a very particular way. Okay, so like I said, half the battle is going to be, first of all, just understanding how to say it, understanding how to see it. Um, and then the second battle will be understanding how to write it. Okay, um, and so for me, when I mark you on these things, usually what I will look at is I will look at have you shown me an understanding of what the proper domain is that would be worth half the value of the question and then did you write it down properly that would be worth the other half of the question okay um so just something to keep in mind as we go through this together okay i'm not saying all that to scare you um but i am saying this is an important video and you're going to want to watch it a few times and you're going to want to watch uh sorry you're going to want to pause me you're going to want to write things down before you see me write things down and then you're going to want to see if you wrote it exactly the way i wrote it and and close enough is not good enough here okay if you find yourself saying oh close enough then you're wrong okay it has to be exactly the way you see it on the screen in a couple minutes okay so with that stressful introduction uh let's begin uh, so, <clears throat> when we are trying to describe graphs, we look at what values we can have and what values we cannot have. For instance, in our tie the knot activity, that was our intro activity to this unit, we knew that we couldn't have a negative length of string, nor could we have a length that was longer than the starting length. So the length of string would always have to be between zero and our starting length. Okay, that describes what values the length of string could be. It could be somewhere between zero and whatever the starting length of string was, okay? The restrictions on what numbers can be referred to, what the numbers can be, sorry, are referred to as domain and range. The domain looks at what X can be, and the range looks at what Y can be. Okay, now I have an opening activity, which obviously uh, online watching this, you're not gonna be able to do. So I'm just gonna skip through the next two slides. Don't worry about them. Um, if you are a person who sees me on a regular basis in class, we will do that in class together. Okay, and if you are not a person who sees me on a regular basis in class, that's okay, don't worry about it. Uh, okay, inequalities. Inequalities are used to represent a range of possible values. If I sent you to the store with 50 bucks and asked you to buy my lunch, there's a range of money that you could spend. You could spend $50. You could spend $40. You could spend $29.99. You can't spend $51. You can't spend $50.25, okay? Because I only gave you 50, okay? So immediately in the context of that question, there's a whack of answers you can give me but they're all within a particular start to a particular stop, okay? Now, we would represent inequalities with four different symbols, and you've looked at these symbols for a long time. These would have been introduced to you probably way back in elementary, but you gotta say goodbye to the alligator. If you are a person who looks at this and says, oh, okay, I gotta figure this out, alligator eats the bigger number, that's not gonna work here. I need you to be able to mathematically say what those symbols are, because we're gonna be reading math sentences together. Okay, so that first one you see there is less than. Remember that less than actually forms the closest L possible. When you compare that to the other guy, that's not, it's a backwards L, okay? 
Okay, I know it's a slanted L, but you can see the L better with the less than. So less starts with L, and that guy kind of looks like an L. So remember that. So the other guy would be greater than. Then if there's a bar underneath it, we have less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So make sure you can read those statements. So represent this on a number line. I want you to be able to read that statement to me. That statement says X is greater than or equal to five. So to do this on a number line, you just write a number line. Now I just grabbed a number line from the internet. So my number line is very, um, uh, it's full. Okay, there's, there's integers all the way from negative 10 to 10 there. I don't need that when you're showing me a number line. Um, if you just want to go, here's my number line and here's five, that's totally okay with me. Okay. But now you got to decide two things about your five. You know, you're starting with five somehow. Uh, you have to tell me which direction my arrow should be pointing for greater than. You also have to start with a circle and you have to decide whether that circle is colored in or not colored in. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you remember that or not, but just in case you don't, here we go. If it can be the number, so that would refer to there being a little equal sign there. If it can be the number, you color the dot in. And if it can't be the number, you don't color it in. So I have started with a dot at five and I've colored in that dot because I can be five. And then greater than means I'm gonna head to the right. So I've shown you an arrow heading to the right. Okay, represent this guy on a number line. Again, I would want you to be able to mathematically read that out loud. That says X is less than negative one. So I draw a number line where negative one is and literally I just take that same number line now. There's my negative one. That's all I need for the number line. Okay, I don't have to have a bunch of different numbers there. I just pulled my number lines off Google. Oh, I went backwards, sorry. Okay, so I find negative one this time. I can't be negative one because I don't have an equal sign there. So it'll be a uh, non-colored in or an open circle there. Um, and then less than we're heading to the left, okay? Okay, write an inequality. Now this one's really important as we get going on this lesson on how you would write this. First of all, do you understand what you see? Um, I would want you to be comfortable saying, Maybe you start by saying X has to be greater than negative three and X has to be less than four, okay? Um, I would wanna take that one step further because when, when you say greater than negative three and less than four, I don't want you to think that there's two different arrows going in two different directions there. I would say X can be anything I want in between negative three and four, okay? Now there's a specific way to write that. What we would do is we would go bottom, is less than or equal to my variable is less than or equal to top, okay? So it would look like this. The bottom number, my starting number would be negative three. My ending number, as high as I can go, would be four. And so I say negative three is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to four, okay? It's always written like this. It's always less than signs. Saying negative three is less than x is saying that x is greater than negative three right? You can read those in both directions, but this is how we write it. So essentially this mathematically says X can be anything in between negative three and four. Okay. And that's going to become super, super important as we continue here and we start properly writing domain and range. I haven't done that yet. Just if you're trying to figure out what's going on, I'm just kind of introducing the concept to you and making sure you're comfortable with inequality signs before we actually get into figuring out what domain and range are. Okay. So give me this one as well. Write this as an um, inequality. Um, I'm colored in, so that means I should be equal to. I'm heading to the right, that means I should be greater than or equal to. Uh, and I'm starting at negative three, so x is greater than or equal to negative three. Okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to start writing uh, domain and ranges. Now, which of the following sets represent functions that was what we did yesterday, so I'm adding that in just as a review, uh, and write the domain and range for each set. Now, looking at this, let's answer the first question first, is it a function or not? I'm looking at my x's, I see one, three, five, seven, nine. X's are not duplicated, which means it is in fact a function, okay? Now, to write domain and range, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a squiggly bracket, Okay, 
remember that that talks about set notation. So set notation defines a group, right? You can actually see a squiggly bracket in this question right now because I defined a group of points. Okay, so when we do domain, first of all, we should say what we're doing. So we're going to work on the domain right now. And then you say all the values of x such that. So we have an x with a straight line down. Okay, and we talked about this a long time ago when we talked about the definition for the rational family. All the values of x such that or where. And now you give the definition here. Okay, when you are given a series of points, you cannot read between the lines. You cannot insinuate right now that x could be 1.2. You can't insinuate right now that x could be 2 because 2 is not there as an x value. Okay, I go from x equal 1 to x equals 3. I cannot assume anything exists in between that 1 and 3. So to start with then, I'm going to say x equals, and I just list the, the domains that I, or the x values that I see. Okay, the domain would be the group of x values. So I list them all. When I do that though, I need to do it in ascending order. So from smallest to largest. So I'm going to say x equals 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And then I'm going to close my bracket. So it would look like that. The domain is x, all the values of x such that x equals 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay, the range, when I look at the range, I've got a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, and a 10. So I'm just going to list those. The range is all the values of y, because range is y now, right? Such that, or where, y equals 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then I shut my squiggly door there. All right, next guy. Again, this is a series of points. I don't know if you remember or not, but that would be referred to as discrete data. Okay, because there's no line that I can see here connecting these points together, we say that the data is discrete. Um, is it a function? Well, I've got a 1, a negative 4, negative 2, negative 11, negative 10. X is not repeating, so it is a function. Um, those are all my values for X, but I'm going to write them in proper order. So I'm going to go from smallest to largest. So that'd be negative 11, negative 10, negative 4, negative 2, and 1. So I say open up a squiggly bracket. Um, the domain is all the values of x such that x equals, I list all my x values in order from smallest to largest, uh, and then I shut the door, and my domain is done. The range, I've got a 1, 6, 4, 7, and 1. Uh, notice that I have two ones there. I don't, when I'm listing these guys, the, the, the purpose of describing the range is describing the values that y can be. The fact that y can be 1 twice doesn't matter. If I say y can be 1, y can be 1. So I do not list duplicate items in listing my domain and range. Okay, so I'm only going to say the 1 once. So the range would be all the values of y such that y is 1, 4, 6, 7. Again, I'm just writing in uh, ascending order. I start by stating range. And, and I write the whole word, I don't want an abbreviation there, and then squiggly bracket, y such that y equals that. Okay, next guy, looking at my x's first to determine whether it's a function or not. Um, it is a function, there is no repeating x value there. X's are four and two and three and five and zero, so I'm going to list those in order uh, from smallest to largest. My range is seven, four, seven, nine, and five. Again, seven gets duplicated here, but I'm only going to say it once. Um, and from order from smallest to largest, y equals four, five, seven, and nine. Okay, uh, then this guy, I've got, I do have a duplicate x there. Um, you can see that x, there are two fours for x, um, which means it's not a function. That's my answer to it's not a function because remember what we talked about yesterday. Person number four is trying to live in house zero and house one at the exact same time, okay? And that makes it not a function. Still a relation, but not a function. Um, so then all my values for x, when I'm listing the domain, I'll say all the values of x such that x equals three, comma, four, comma, five, comma, eight. Again, I don't need to repeat the four. And then my y's, I've got a repeating one. 
So it'll be all the values of y such that y equals 0, 1, 2, 6. Okay? Okay, so I slightly alluded to this already, but the above sets are discrete relations, meaning there is no data between the given points. We cannot connect the points with a line. If you're trying to figure out if something's discrete or not, uh, my first statement is, if you're looking at a table of values only or a series of points only, you can't read into what's not given to you. So if you see points, you have to assume points, okay? Uh, if you're given an equation, that's different because an equation, you can stick anything you want in for x, okay? Uh, the other thing you wanna ask yourself is, can I have half of an item? So if you're thinking about the context of an equation, let's say I'm selling raffle tickets. Well, I can't sell half of a ticket, okay? I either sell a ticket or I sell two tickets. I can't sell one and a half tickets. So that would have to be discrete just based on the context that I'm dealing with, okay? When we have a continuous relation, um, that's data where the points can be connected with a line or a curve. And we write the domain differently. So everything I've done so far with you for domain and range, it's been very straightforward. You just say all the values of X such that and you list those values. Okay, that's only for discrete data. It doesn't work for continuous data. We need a different thing for continuous data. Okay, and so now we're going to shift this lesson into talking a little bit more about how to represent uh, continuous data. Now, there are two different ways that I can write domain and range when I'm dealing with continuous data. Okay, this, the start of this, where I open up a squiggly bracket and I say X such that X and I define something here. This is called set builder uh, notation, set builder notation, okay? There's another way to do it called interval notation and interval notation just uses brackets with your smallest number comma your largest number, okay? And <clears throat> if I can be the smallest number, um, I will have a square bracket around it, and if I can't be it, I'll have a curved bracket around it. Now you'll see that in a second. As we go through all these examples, I'm going to show you set builder notation and interval notation for every question. Okay, set builder notation will always be in red, and the interval notation will always be in a light blue. Um, they mean the same thing. I'm showing you both because I want you to have a good understanding of both. Um, by the time you get into grade 12, if you're going into a dash one strand, 30 dash one students would be required to have a very good working knowledge of both types. Okay. Um, most of you should in grade 10, I would say focus on set builder notation because that's what's going to be communicated to you the most. Um, but I will show you both and I will accept both as correct answers as long as you've done them correctly. So important that you are, you, the work that you are gonna write down looks exactly like the work that I'm gonna write down, okay? I cannot stress that enough. Okay, so determine the domain and range of the following. Also determine whether the function, whether the relation is a function or not, and whether it's continuous or discrete. So for every question we're gonna walk through, I'm going to answer those questions in the same order. The first thing I'm going to do is tell you whether it's a function or not. Then I'm going to tell you whether it's continuous or discrete. Then we're going to talk about the domain. And then we're going to talk about the range. Okay. All right. So first example, we have this. Now, <clears throat> I've given you an equation that goes with this line as well. But a couple of things I need you to understand. Okay. Number one, I need you to see that this line spills off the page, okay? Like the graph itself would have stopped right there and the line goes right off. As soon as you see that, you need to be comfortable to say that that line is just gonna go on forever and ever and ever like that, okay? It just keeps going, okay? If there is a distinct start or stop to a graph, we will make that super, super obvious. There'll be a big old dot and there'll be a like space all around it. If it goes to the edge, you do not need to have arrowheads on a computer generated graph to know that that goes on forever, okay? If you're drawing me a graph, you do have to have arrowheads on it. And I know that that sounds like it's conflicting, um, but it's, it's a matter of what's a computer generated and what's hand drawn, okay? So for computer generated graphs, if they spill off the page, 
you don't need to see arrowheads to know that they're going forever. In a hand-drawn graph, um, you will need to put arrowheads there to tell me that they will go on forever in both directions, okay? Okay, so first question, is it a function? If I was to draw a vertical line anywhere I want on this graph, um, I'm just gonna get a vertical line so I can do that for you. No matter where I draw that vertical line, those are bad vertical lines, but you see my point, it's only gonna hit once. Okay, so yes, it is a function. Um, I see a line, so it is continuous data, okay? You would only say it's discrete here if you saw um, a series of points. Okay, now, for the domain, we're asking ourselves, what is x allowed to be? Well, just walk me through that for a sec. Can x be zero? Um, and the answer is yes, x is zero right here, right? That's when x is zero. Well, can x be negative five? Yep, x is negative five right about here. Can x be negative 10? Sure, maybe somewhere down here. Can x be negative 18,576,423? Yes. What's my point? My point is x can be anything, and there is a mathematical way to say that x can be anything, okay? In set builder notation, I'm just gonna clear all that ink for you. In set builder notation, we say all the values of x such that x is a member of the reals. You'll remember this Greek letter epsilon, okay? It's kind of like a C with a straight line in the middle. That means is a member of or belongs to. When we just say that x belongs to the real family, we are mathematically saying that x can be anything I want, okay? You must use squiggly brackets. You must start with the letter and the straight line down, okay? All of these things have to be a part of your answer or your answer is considered incomplete. Um, okay, now, remember I said in the previous slide that there are two different ways to do this. That's set builder notation and that's my red. I told you I'd also show you interval notation in light blue. Interval notation is my smallest number, to my largest number. Now, if x can be anything, my smallest number is actually negative infinity, and my largest number is positive infinity. So I'm gonna say that x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. If I can be the numbers, I put a square bracket there. If I can't be the numbers, I put a curved bracket there. I can never physically reach infinity, because technically infinity never stops, right? It goes to infinity. Uh, and we can never get there unless you're Buzz Lightyear he can go beyond, but that's another story. So I'm gonna go negative infinity to infinity, and I have curved brackets on each side because I can't actually equal those numbers, okay? So the red is set builder notation, the blue is interval notation. My one worry when I show kids two different ways is they try and marriage the two ways together, uh, and that never works, that doesn't give you the right answer, okay? So either, write it properly in set or write it properly in interval but don't try and combine the two together okay uh okay now the range same thing i'm just going to go bottom to top and i'm going to say what can y be and in this one y can again be anything uh y can be there y can be there y can be up there right because this is just going to go on forever and ever y can be down here no problem y can be anything i want so in this context the range is going to look exactly like the domain did, except I'm saying y instead of x. Okay? All right, the next guy. So, first of all, is it a function? Uh, yes, that passes the vertical line test. Uh, and it is continuous because I see, um, I don't see a series of dots. I see a curve, okay? Um, and so it is continuous data. Now, what can x be? Well, x can be, let's just think about it for a sec. x could be zero, that's no problem. x could be like three, that's no problem. x could be like 100, that's no problem, because that's just gonna keep going this way forever, okay? What I want you to see, though, is x can't be right here. The graph only starts here. The graph only starts at negative four. Okay, and so I can be negative four and that way, essentially. Do you see what I'm saying? I can be negative four and then I'm heading 
As far as left-right concerns, I'm heading to the right forever after that. So how do we say that? Well, we say x can be greater than negative 4. And it can equal negative 4 because that's not an open circle. That's not a uh, circle that's not colored in. It's colored in, which means it can be negative 4. So my domain, I'm still going to start with a squiggly bracket. I'm still going to say all the values of x such that x, now I have to define myself, and I'm going to say x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay. Um, I, sorry, I need to get a mouse on so I can click. There we go. So all the values of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Notice a couple of things here before I uh, show you interval notation. Number one, I did not say x equals this. Okay, I know in the first like four or five examples, I kept saying x equals blah, 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 blah. That was specific to discrete data. Okay, so just be careful with that. Now I'm saying not an equal statement, but an inequality statement. So x is greater than or equal to negative four. The other thing I want you to notice is I still say x is a member of the reals on the end of this. And I have to. This is always there if I'm talking about continuous data. Okay, you always conclude x is a member of the reals if you're talking about continuous data. You can't say it if you're talking about discrete data, but we'll talk about that in a few more examples. Okay, so interval notation, my lowest number is negative four, my highest number is infinity. Um, I can be negative four, so there'll be a square bracket around the negative four. Um, I can't be infinity, so there'll be a curved bracket at infinity. So this is what interval notation would look like. Okay, all right, let's talk about the range. Um, so I'm looking from bottom to top, and what I notice is there's, there's a cap to how high I go. This graph is starting at y equals five. It's starting right here. I'm just gonna put a line there so you can see it. Okay, it starts there and that's as high as I go. So it starts there and then it's heading down. Okay, so I would say y is less than or equal to five. So for my range, all the values of y such that y is less than or equal to five. And then again, y is a member of the reals because it's not a series of dots. Now, with interval notation, I always have to go smallest to highest. So I have to think, okay, I'm going bottom to top. Um, if I'm going bottom to top, my bottom is negative infinity right now because it actually goes down forever. So I'm going to say negative infinity to five. Um, I cannot be negative infinity, so that's going to get a curved bracket. I can be five, so that's going to get a square bracket. Okay? All right. Math sends you in circles. <laughs> okay, sorry. <clears throat> Let's focus. So, is it a function? First answer, no, it's not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test. If I drew a vertical line here, it will hit more than once, which means x is duplicated. So it is not a function. It is still continuous data, though, because it's not a series of points. I only answer discrete if it's a series of points. Now, um, the domain. Here we have a distinct start and stop to my domain, okay? My domain goes from negative 3 to 3. I don't go beyond where I just put those lines, okay? Do you see that? So if my domain goes from negative 3 to 3, I go back to, um, essentially, when I was introducing inequalities, I gave you one where there was a start and stop to the domain. Okay, that's how I write it now. It's with less than sign. So I say domain, all the values of x such that negative three is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to three. And then I still say x is a member of the reals because x can be anything in between negative three and three. Okay. Okay. The range, what's going down with the range? Well, look at your look for your bottom and look for your top. So my bottom here is negative three. My top here is three. So the range is actually gonna be the same thing here, negative three to three, okay? I neglected to show you interval notation for the domain. So that's gonna be the next thing that will pop up. Negative three to three. Notice I have square brackets on both of them because I can be both of them. It hits negative three and it hits three, okay? My range for this guy, that was the pink lines that I just drew in. Um, again, we'll go from negative three to three. So it's gonna look very similar, except I'm dealing with y's. And the interval notation actually looks exactly the same for that guy, okay? 
you got this. I know at this point your head might be spinning a little. Um, <clears throat> As you keep practicing this, as you keep playing this video, as you keep trying and as you keep trying the homework, it's gonna feel better, okay? This is a very abstract thing to think about. Don't get yourself frustrated, it will come, okay? Okay, sorry, let me get the ink off there. Um, so first of all, not a function, because I see that two is trying to go to 10 and 30 at the same time, so not a function. Um, this time I have to call this discrete data. There is nothing in here that tells me that the data I see gets connected to each other. Okay, so I can't read between the lines. I have to call it discrete data. When I have discrete data then, um, I have to go back to those first examples. A Couple of things I could do. Either I can say all the values of X such that X equals and just go two, three, four, five, six, just like I was doing, okay? Or in this one, I could actually say I can go from two to six as long as I'm a member of the natural number family. Um, that would work too. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I did it the first way. I said two to six. Uh, so two is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to six. But then I said X is a member of the natural family. If you had wanted to do it this way and just say all the values of X such that X equals two comma three comma four comma five comma six, and then shut the door that way, that would have been totally okay as well, okay? Um, the one thing you have to be careful of is when I did the domain here, I'm allowed to say two to six and X is a member of the naturals because I hit every natural number between two and six. Say the five wasn't there, so just for purposes of conversation, let's just scratch this out and let's say that five wasn't there for a second, then I can't do it like I did there. I would have to do it like this without the five, okay? So just be careful of that. The other conversation I need to have here is I want you to notice I will not show you interval notation here. Interval notation only works well when X is a member of the reals, so it's reserved for continuous data. For discrete data, we're gonna stay with set builder notation, which will be like that. Okay, um, now we'll go back to our conversation here and let's talk about the range. Now, I got 10, 20, and 30. Those aren't necessarily particular families, so it's easier just to list those ones. Um, so I'm gonna say all the values of y such that y equals 10, 20, 30. Notice I'm not saying here x is a member of the reals. If I was to say x is a member of the reals here, I would be insinuating it could be anything and that's not what I want to do. X is a member of the reals is reserved for continuous data, just like interval notation was reserved for continuous data, okay? When it's discrete data, I just list them, okay? All right, good. Now, let's give this guy a try. Um, again, first of all, we're gonna say, is it a function or not? Um, it is a function. If I was to try the vertical line test here, anywhere where I put that vertical line, uh, it will only hit once. So it is a function. Um, I'm back to being continuous because I don't see a series of dots here. I see all those infinite amount of dots essentially connected with a curve. Um, <clears throat> now I need to talk about the domain. So I see a distinct uh, point here, which is at x equals three, and I see that I'm heading to the left. Okay, so I would say X can be anything I want as long as it's less than three. Okay, so we would say all the values of X such that X is less than or equal to three and X is a member of the reals. In interval notation, I have to go from smallest to largest. So my smallest number would be negative infinity and my largest number would be three. I can't be negative infinity, so that would get a curved bracket. I can be three, so that would get a square bracket, so interval notation looks like that. For domain, I'm thinking bottom to top, and I'm trying to figure out what Y can be. Now, lots of kids look at this one and tell me, oh, okay, I have a bottom at uh, negative one here, okay? Cool, um, but then they'll mess things up because they get kind of tunnel vision, and they'll say, oh, okay, I can go from negative one to eight. That's not true because I want you to see that this actually goes on forever. So this is gonna keep going up, 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 up. So the fact that that is an eight there doesn't matter to the range. Um, my range is gonna be 
y is greater than negative 1, essentially negative 1 to infinity if I'm thinking about interval notation. Okay, so don't let that fact that like we needed this, we needed this starting point for the x, but we don't need it for y. Um, so don't get caught into thinking that we had to use that y equals 8 somewhere. So, sorry, I got to turn my mouse back on. Uh, okay, so y is greater than or equal to negative 1 and y is a member of the reals. And then for interval notation, bottom to top, it's always lowest to highest. So my lowest number is negative 1. My highest number is infinity. I can be negative 1, so I have a square bracket there. I cannot be infinity, so I have a curved bracket there. Okay. Okay, looking at this guy. Um, now, remember I told you if we wanted to start and stop it, you would see it very obvious. This does not spill off. You see these circles on either end of these. So this is now a line segment. This is not continuing forever, okay? But it's very obvious that it doesn't continue forever because you see the space around the dots. Um, so domain, I have a beginning and I have an end. My beginning is at negative three. My end is at five. So I would say negative three to five. Now, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Is it a function? Yes, it still passes the vertical line test. Um, is it discrete or continuous? It is still continuous because I see the dots connected by a line. My domain is gonna go from negative three to five. So I would say all the values of x such that negative three is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to five x is a member of the reals. Okay, again, it's always the smallest number, less than or equal to your variable, less than or equal to your larger number, and then x is a member of the reals. Interval notation, I would say just going from negative three to five, I can be both of those, so both of them have square brackets. And then for the range, we're looking at bottom to top, so my bottom is at what here, three, and my top is at uh, seven. So I'd go three to seven. Oh, sorry, I didn't have my, I can't get my mouse on. There we go. Okay, so three to seven. So all the values of y such that three is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to seven. And y is a member of the reals. And then for um, interval notation, it would be three to seven. Okay. All right, now I see dots. As soon as I see dots, I'm thinking discrete data. I'm thinking I have to list them, okay? Um, is it a function or not? Uh, this one's not a function, and the reason it's not a function is because my vertical line test right there would hit twice, okay? So, not a function, um, it's discrete. Now, in order to state the domain, let's look. You assume that each of these are one unless you're told otherwise. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three. So I've got negative two, negative three, negative two, negative one, and one. Notice I skipped zero here, so I can't say it's a member of one family. I'm just gonna have to list them for this guy. So all the values of x such that x equals negative three, negative two, negative one, and one. For my range, this would be negative two, negative one, uh, two, three, and four. Okay. All right. I heart math. Um, is it a function? No, it does not pass the vertical line test. It is this, uh, sorry, it is continuous because I don't see a series of dots. I see, um, lines and curves. Okay. So it would be not a function and it would be continuous. Now, Domain, again, I'm looking at where do I start and stop. So, so domain, I'm always looking at where do I start and stop going left to right. And range, I'm always looking at where do I start and stop going up and down, down bottom to top, right? Because you always got to go smallest to largest. So always think bottom to top for range, left to right for uh, domain. So let's unpack that for domain. It looks like that's my smallest number and that's my largest number. So I'm going to go from one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One to seven. Okay, one to seven. And then that would be in interval notation, uh, square bracket, one comma seven square bracket. And then my range, I'm looking at um, bottom to top. So my bottom is there and my top is there. So that'd be zero to one, two, three, four, zero to four. Everybody see what I'm doing there? Okay, and then interval notation would be 
0 comma 4 with square brackets on either side. Okay? Awesome. All right. Now we're going to end with just three little uh, application questions here. The table shows masses m uh, grams of different numbers of identical marbles n. Why is this relation also a function? Your answer there is you do not see any duplicate x's. Now you can't actually say x here because x has been defined. So you gotta be really careful when you're given a context, okay? X is now n and y is now m. So those are things you have to watch, okay? So I say there are no duplicate n's because that's my input. Because there are no duplicate inputs, I know that I can say that this is a function. Identify the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is always what you have control of. It's also the thing that um, is stated first, okay? So the number of marbles is your independent variable here, whereas the mass of marbles would be um, your dependent. You have control over the number of marbles that you're looking at. I can choose to look at two marbles. I can choose to look at 10 marbles, okay? I'm not choosing the mass there. The mass gets chosen for me based on the number of marbles I'm choosing to look at, okay? So the one you have control over is the number of marbles you're looking at. So independent is number of marbles and dependent is the mass. What would be the domain and range? Again, uh, you're given a table, you have to assume discrete data. Uh, the other thing to be careful of with this guy, again, is you can't say X anymore, you have to say N. So the domain will be all the values of N such that, not all the values of X such that. So um, I did, I, I used um, set builder notation and I used inequalities because I was every natural number between one and six. So I said one to six, one is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to six where n is a member of the natural family. I could also have just said all the values of n such that n equals one comma two comma three comma four comma five comma six. That would have been perfectly acceptable as well. Then I wouldn't say n is a member of the naturals because I've actually just listed everything I needed. Okay, uh, for the range, um, these guys I am just going to list. So the range would be all the values of m such that m equals uh, all of those guys written in proper order. Notice when I'm just listing, I don't define a family or anything like that. Okay, awesome. Okay, let me get that ink off for you. And we'll go, this graph shows the number of fishing boats, N, anchored in an inlet in the Queen Charlotte Islands as a function of time, T. Identify the dependent variable and the independent. Again, uh, independent is always time, but independent is also always X, which means it's always the X axis that you'd be looking for for your independent. Um, so independence, time, and number of boats is dependent. Why are the boats not connected? Because it's discrete data. Why is it discrete data? I can't have half a boat. I either have a boat or I don't have a boat. I can't have one and a half boats, okay? Um, so data is discrete. You can't have half a boat. Determine the domain and range. Again, here then, um, <clears throat> the domain would be these timestamps, okay? So I end up with nine to 16. Notice I'm not using X, notice I'm using T because that's what it's been defined as. If you go back to the question, they defined the X value as T and the Y value as N, okay? So uh, again though, if you had just wanted to list these, that would have been okay as well. You could have said all the values of T such that T equals 9 comma 10 comma 11 comma 12 comma 13 comma 14 comma 15 comma 16 uh, because they're all represented there. I just decided it was easier to say, hey, that means I can be from nine to 16 as long as I'm a member of the natural family, okay? And then for my range, um, the range I did just list, n could be six comma eight comma 10 comma 11 comma 15 comma 25. I can't say six to 25 there because not all natural numbers are represented there. So because I'm skipping data, I have to just list them now, okay? Awesome, okay, so, here is a graph of the function f of x equals negative 3x plus 7. Determine the domain and range. Well, this is a line, uh, so you're looking at an equation. You're also looking at a computer-generated graph where it spills off of the grid, so you know that this goes uh, in both directions forever. So the domain will be x as a member of the reals, and the range will be x, y as a member of the reals. 
okay? Uh, determine the range value when the domain value is negative two, both algebraically and graphically. Well, graphically, if the domain value is negative two, we just follow along where the domain value is negative two. There I am on my line, and that would be a range value of here. Now, make sure you're reading your scale properly. This goes from 12 to 16. Um, so if I go from 12 to 16, the lines are going up by twos. So if I'm halfway between the line, that would be one. So it's gonna look like 13. Algebraically, um, I plug in my domain value of negative two. Well, the domain value is an X value. So I just plug in negative two. I'm solving for F of negative two, which means I substitute negative two anywhere where I see an X and then I solve and I get F of negative two equals 13, okay? Determine the domain value. We're just gonna go the other way now. Determine the domain value when the range value is four. Okay, same thing. This time I'm looking at a range value of four and then I follow that through and I get a domain value of, again, make sure you're reading your scale, that would be a one, okay? Then algebraically, I'm replacing the whole f of x because remember f of x is y. I'm replacing the whole f of x with four. Um, and now I'm gonna algebraically solve. So I'll subtract seven from both sides and then divide both sides by neg three and I get x equals one, okay? So this is not a lesson where you're, I'm feeling like you're gonna watch this video once and you'll be like, oh, I totally get it. I am gonna be pristine with domain and range. Um, I don't think that's realistic, okay? So don't put that on yourself. Um, I want you to watch me again. I want you to try some homework. I want you to be very, very careful that you're checking your answers in your homework and making sure you're writing it exactly proper. Remember, half the battle is understanding what you see. The other half is communicating it in the proper way. Okay, so take your time. This is not something I want you to rush through. I want you guys to feel really, really good about domain and range, okay? As always, if you have any questions, make sure you come and chat with me, okay? Take care, guys. Have a good day.